Till now we have been dealing with a single market where there would be a single person that can buy a couple of goods with a fixed amount of income. Now we'll do something similar, but our world will have two people who will be able to exchange their stuff amongst themselves. And you'll see the Etrith box is kind of like a handy tool when it comes to visualizing something like that. All right, hopefully you've seen this graph before. We have an agent A and we have two goods, books and coconuts. The indifference curves are standard convex and the agent will prefer the higher indifference curve, which will provide more utility because that agent prefers having more stuff, right? So the red arrow represents the direction of increasing utility. Now we have another agent over here, agent B. And his blue graph looks exactly the same. Now let's say that agent A and B have some amount of both books and coconuts. So agent A has, let's say, three coconuts, two books, and this is his point on the graph. And agent B has two coconuts and four books. And this is his point on the graph. By the way, the amount of stuff they have is in textbooks that's usually referred to as an endowment or an allocation. So I'll call it an allocation from now on as well. So let's say these two people want to exchange some goods. Maybe A wants more books in exchange of giving some coconuts to B. Now the question arises is if there is a more simplified way of representing whatever this exchange which is about to take place instead of, you know, drawing two graphs all the time. That's where the Edgeworth box comes in. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate person B's graph by 180 degrees and try to combine them. And that's our edge with box. Now this is the origin from A's perspective and this becomes the origin from B's perspective. Now wait a second, take a look at their respective allocations. It's just one point on the graph, right? So in an Azure box, you need to know only one set of coordinates to know the allocations of both the agents. Kind of like a simplified version of drawing two graphs, right? But this might seem trivial after a certain point because the box is just representing the total of what A and B have. Anyway, let's lose these indifference curves for now. And we'll talk about them when we discuss Pareto efficiency. For now, let's just take a look at what this box signifies. So I have a grid in the background where one small box represents one unit of a particular good. So let's say you're given this point over here to calculate A's allocation. You, you do that just like you do it for a normal graph. So the amount of coconuts just becomes, you go three to the right. So that's A has three coconuts and books is just one, two, three. So A has three coconuts and B's and three books. That's A's allocation. Now to calculate B's allocation, all you have to do is do the exact opposite of what you have been doing till now. So for, to calculate the amount of coconuts, instead of going to the right as you do for A, you'll go to the left. So that's one, two, so that's two coconuts and one, two, three. That's three books, that's B's allocation. Usually you're not given a box like that in your textbooks, you'll be provided with the respective allocations. So they'll be like, A has um, three coconuts and three books, B has two coconuts and three books. So in some sense, they're also giving you the dimension of the Edgeworth box. So the length becomes three plus two, five, and the breadth becomes six units, right? Which is the condition in this case as well. Anyway, hopefully you're getting around what this box represents. Let's talk about Pareto efficiency now. If you're familiar with the concept, that's great. If you're not, I have a very short video explaining the concept. The link is in the description and I think it would help. Otherwise, some stuff, some stuff that I'm going to talk about might not make a lot of sense. All right, so the indifference curves for A are moving in this direction and for B are moving in the opposite direction. Let's take a look at this point where the indifference curves for both the agents are intersecting and try to check if this is Pareto efficient. The question we have to ask ourselves is if there is a way to make both of the agents better off. 
If there is, then this point is not Pareto efficient. What if we have an indifference curve for A over here and an indifference curve for B like this? So this is for A and this is for B. In that case, A will be better off because A is getting more utility in this direction, right? And B will be better off as well because B is getting more utility in the opposite direction. So both A and B are better off. That means this point is not Pareto efficient. So anytime these ICs cross, there'll be a region like this. The one I'm shading in white. Where both, so in this region, both A and B will be better off. So your Pareto efficient point will be when the indifference curves are touching but not intersecting. And that is when they are tangential. So it will look something like this. Let's, let's assume they are tangential at this point. Now, if any of these want to get better off, that means they'll have to move in the opposite direction, right? And that will definitely make the other one worse off. So these type of points will be Pareto efficient. The question is, will there only be one such point in the box? In fact, you can have multiple, as you can see in this edit box. Let's, let's talk about this point as well. This is the origin of A. Here, A has zero, zero of everything, and B has um, all the coconuts and all the books in the world, right? So what if you try to make, take some stuff from B? and try to a, a, make A better off. Well, that will definitely make B worse off because you're taking some stuff from B. And if that happens, then this means that this is a Pareto efficient point as well. Similarly, origin of B will also be a Pareto efficient point. So this curve, which is passing through all the Pareto efficient points, kind of represents the set of all the Pareto efficient points inside the Edwin box, and this is called the contract curve. One more thing, we all know that the Pareto efficient points are where the indifference curves are tangential to each other, right? And we do know that the slope of an indifference curve is given by its marginal rate of substitution. So for agent A, it's given by MRS of A, and for agent B, it's given by MRS of B. Now, if their slopes are equal, that means their marginal rate of substitutions are equal as well. So, MRS of A is equal to MRS of B, and this is your Pareto efficiency condition. In fact, we can even use these to solve for the contract curve, and I might do that in a later video. Anyway, hope you got a hang of that. Uh, I'll see you in the next one when I talk about the budget line with respect to the edge box.